have you guys ever been so tired where your head is just pounding and you're scared to close your eyes to even blink because you're afraid that when you do you might accidentally fall asleep? Yeah, that's where I am right now. So by the time you guys are watching this, it will be finals week here on campus, meaning that I will be packing up my dorm room and getting ready to move back home by May 7th, which is coming up so soon, and I'm just in shock that this year has gone by so fast, but at the same time, so slowly. But I'm also super excited to go home and just be done with my freshman year. That being said, I figured it would be a great time just to reflect a little bit on the last year year of my life and do kind of like a freshman year experience, first year of college reflection video type of thingamajig just to talk about some feelings. So through the process of elimination I chose the College of Worcester for my first year of college and I just had a bad feeling about it since depositing, since before I even hit submit. I didn't want to apply to the school in the beginning and my college counselor added it to the list because they gave out money. And he was right, they gave out a lot of money and I'm very thankful for that. I don't know, I just had that gut feeling, don't come here. And it didn't go away. Months passed, I knew I would be attending the school, I graduated high school, I had my grad party, I turned 19 years old, I started my summer job. And the feeling was still there. I was panicking, I couldn't sleep, I was making pros and cons lists, I was debating other options that were not realistic. By the end of July, I emailed the admissions counselor at the school in New York that I really wanted to attend. I made a phone call, and before I knew it, he was flying out to Minneapolis. This was just a coincidence, that he would be flying back to my hometown where I was. And so we met for coffee at Caribou and talked it out. And I just, I wanted to go there so badly. I was willing to sell my soul. But keep in mind, I didn't have any money to pay for school and they could not support me. No school is worth $48,000 of debt by the time you graduate. And I knew that my life would be over if I decided to do that, no matter how unhappy I am here. So I think I really needed that meeting just to know that I did everything that I could and this is what the universe is telling me to do. So in the fall I, I started to attend the College of Worcester in Worcester, Ohio. It's a very very small liberal arts school in the middle of nowhere. There are about 500 freshmen, 2,000 undergrad total. We, for the most part, everyone lives on campus and it's incredibly small. So I tried to start the year off with a positive mindset and I just was trying to look at the bright side of everything, keeping in mind that I am so grateful that the school gave me the incredible amount of money that they provided for me to attend. And it worked for a little while. I immediately hit it off with some girls on my floor and for the first few weeks it felt like a huge slumber party with strangers that I did not know but thought I knew, if that makes sense. About three weeks into college I had what I thought to be stable friends. It was basically just a group of girls on my floor because in college it's kind of how you meet people. It's either through orientation or your neighbors and who you live with. The girl across my hall's birthday was the beginning of September and we were kind of planning to go out together that night. So the night finally came and it was her birthday and I could hear them across the hall partying and just getting ready to go out and tension had been a little weird. I don't remember what came first but I got this text from the birthday girl's roommate and it was calling me out for something thrown out of perspective because she was eavesdropping and heard half of a conversation. So I texted a girl that was going to attend the same kind of hangout party as I was asking if she had if she arrived yet and she told me no she wasn't there yet and I told her I feel like it, it's 10 o'clock I should go join them like I need to support her for her birthday. We said that we would go I think we need to go and I hear so many people in her room and I'm like it's just rude of me it's her birthday we're friends I should go and I knock on the door and suddenly everything is silent no one is laughing or talking the music is turned down and the birthday girl who lives there yells who is it in my little shy voice I just say it's me like Michaela another long silence like a huge pause and she finally opens the door to let me in you know when you enter a room and the vibe changes and you know that you're not wanted or that by the looks on everyone's faces they were either just talking about you or no it's just I wasn't wanted and the girl that I was texting asking if she had arrived yet and if we should go over there and she said no I hadn't I'm not there yet she was hiding in the closet she was there but she didn't want me to come 
So I felt very, very out of place and upset and I knew that I shouldn't be there because they didn't want me to be there and I want to leave. I want to go back to my dorm and I don't want to go out anymore. And I think being an introvert, I forced myself the first four weeks of school to really be social and go out every single night just to meet people and try to find my group. And that is exhausting. You need to let yourself relax and recharge because you will burn out and die. Because you will get pregnant and die. To protect their identity, I will be changing their names in the story. Let's just call these two girls Katie and Jen. Katie pulls me aside and she says, let's go to my room. She had kind of, you know, a few party favors just for the two of us. So I go into her room with her and I kind of tell her what just happened about how I felt very out of place and how I knew no one wanted me to be there. And she tells me blatantly, yeah, no one really wanted you to come tonight. What? Okay, I'm sorry. Even if that is true, do not tell somebody that. It's mean. Little sensitive me starts crying and I try to stop. I don't want to cry. When you tell yourself you're not going to cry, you end up crying more. So that was happening and she was telling me like, you know what, if I were you, because at this point I was like, I don't want to go out. They don't want me there. Fine. I'm not going to go out with them. I would rather stay in my room and journal. Katie tells me, if I were you, I would go out and show them that you're fun, fun to be around. And then she said something very, very odd. She said that since she was friends with both both Jen and me, she didn't want there to be tension between the three of us. And that if Jen and I were fighting and she had to make a choice, she would choose Jen. And she told me this. So now I am both hurt, sad, and aware that if I don't go out, I might lose the only friends I've made in college. So I chug the stupid mini drink that she gave me. Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna bluntly say that because it's college and there is drinking going on. I'm feeling so bad inside and just terrible about myself, defeated and upset and confused and realized that nobody cared for me here and that I had no one that would choose me. I mean, she blatantly just said, I'm gonna choose somebody else over you. And that's hurtful and so I'm crying and I don't want to go out anymore. I don't want to waste my time and energy on people that don't care about me. But because of what Katie said, it scared me and I needed friends so I went out anyways. And the self-esteem that I have tried to work out for the night has just been destroyed. I am a mess. And I go out and I'm still crying and I just, I see Jen and all of her friends when we re-enter her room and I can't stop crying. But I go out anyways and I dance and I try to be fun. But about 20 minutes into it, I just, I know that I'm just a wreck and I need to go. So I leave. <sighs> that was the worst night of my entire college life. The feelings of not being wanted or cared about on the outside made me feel like I wasn't worth, like I wasn't worth it, basically. The next morning I woke up and I felt like I had zero friends, like I had just lost the only people that I had met and that really affected the rest of my year socially at college and for the longest time I tried to avoid them which is very hard, you know, we live within 10 feet of each other and the bathroom, I always run into them in the bathroom and I would see them, you know, in the dining hall, in the street, and the glares and the text messages and everybody that I passed, I just felt like they hated me because of that huge group of girls. There was a lot of drama on my floor and a lot of social friend clicky issues that happened, a lot of fights. And I'm not the type of girl to get involved in that. No, I'm just not going to deal with drama. To be thrown into the college world and immediately have to deal with stupid, immature, girly shit like that, it affected the rest of my year. It made me a lot more restrained. I didn't want to make friends as quickly as I wanted to in the beginning and I was just done. I was talking to someone about what had happened and they asked me if I was being bullied and I laughed and I said no because it's not 7th grade. But part of me thinks I was. And I don't know what qualifies and I feel like it might on some level. They weren't being nice to me. I don't, I feel a little, I don't know. Megan Rosette made a few videos addressing the bullying issues that she faced in college and mine were very similar. I feel that on some level it does count. I just did not want to go out and meet people because I had the preconceived idea in my mind that everybody hates me. 
So I just kept to myself and I became very isolated and I just, you know, I stayed in my room more. I didn't talk or smile at people in the hallway. I didn't want to meet anyone. I missed out on social events that just weren't worth my time anymore and I became very introverted. With that in mind, I also became very bored because you can only do so much by yourself. I have read over 22 books so far since January. I started writing them down. So I started doing that and, you know, I knit so many scarves this winter. I started doing yoga and meditation and drawing more. I watched so many TV shows and Netflix and I really invested time in YouTube. I mean, I guess that's kind of the silver lining out of this is that I found YouTube. Well, I didn't find it. I'd always been on there, but I started investing time into creating my own videos and putting it out there and listening to other people and just becoming a lot more becoming a lot more involved in the YouTube community. Oh my god, I just am at all around. Wow. I felt like I had made a mistake and I that I shouldn't have been here. I just I don't know. To be honest, it's just a bunch of kids in bunk beds that don't know what to do with their lives. I feel like I'm in prison. Like, this is my cell and all I do is fumble around and I get, you know, freedom hours to go to class and then I come back and I just do frivolous hobbies to pass time. This entire year has just been a number of countdowns until I can go back home. 48 days till Thanksgiving, 22 days until spring break. Like, this entire year I looked forward to leaving. And I still look forward to leaving. I just... I don't know what else to say. Maybe this video was just a bad idea. I'm a first generation college student in my family. My parents haven't graduated from college. I knew that if I took time off that I would never go back to school. So although there are many moments this year where I was so close to dropping out, so close to taking a gap year, so close to just leaving, I stayed because there were many terrible things that had happened this year that I wish didn't happen. If they had not happened, I might not be here uploading a video to my channel and feeling like I have over 200 friends, which, wow, I still cannot believe that I do have on YouTube. If you are one of them, thank you so much. It means so much to me. And if you're not yet, just subscribe and we can be friends and just, you know, it'll be one happy family. I want to end this video on a positive note, so here's to hoping that next year, my sophomore year of college, is a completely different story and that it's a gazillion times better. And I really think it will be because I learned a lot about myself, things that are very... I just... I can't share with you guys yet, although I plan to make a video on all of these topics very soon. I don't know what's going to happen next year, but no matter what, it's going to be different because I will be different. And I just... if I do come back to this college, I won't even be a sophomore, I'll be a junior. So I'll get to graduate in three years and it's just... That's wonderful. Like, why am I transferring? Well, I can make a huge video on that, but it would be very negative, and I don't think you just want to listen to me rant about reasons why I hate the school. I feel like that would just not be good. So I guess that's kind of the silver lining in it all, is that I found YouTube, and I started putting my videos out there. And although I had a lot of, you know, terrible things happen this year, I have you guys, and that's kind of the best gift the best thing that has ever happened so far and I just honestly cannot believe what has happened with this channel so far and I have I just I smile just thinking about it and I'm so thankful and I just can't wait to show you guys what I am planning and where this takes us congratulations to all of those seniors that have made their decisions and I wish you guys all the best if you are going to be a senior next year wow you are in for quite the year, but good luck. At the end of it, everything will work out the way it's supposed to. Even if it's not how you thought it would be, just keep in mind that, you know, the universe has a plan and everything happens for a reason. At least that's what I believe. I don't know, when I think about it, in a gazillion years, I never thought I would be making YouTube videos and because of everything that has happened this year socially and just where I am right now, I found myself on YouTube with this channel and it is kind of like the light at the end of the, my tunnel my tunnel. That sounds sexual. Um, it's kind of like the light at the end, end of the tunnel for me. I just want to thank you guys all for listening and being there and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. This video is very scattered 
and I left out a lot. I want to make another one addressing it, so if you guys have any questions or specific topics that you do want me to talk about, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try to, you know, readjust what's going on up here and try to tell it in a more organized fashion. This was just, I turned on the camera to see what happened and this is just what came out. If you haven't seen my dorm tour, make sure to check it out on my channel. And I also did a college expectation versus reality video, which is kind of funny, but this one obviously is a lot more serious. Other than that, I think I'm going to go and hopefully I'm going to try to edit some, I don't, I don't even know. This video is so hard to film. You guys, I have been working on this for like three hours. Woo, yeah. I think the other thing is just it's very isolated and it's very in the middle of nowhere. I feel very stuck and just stuck school in the countryside isn't for everyone. If it's for you and it works, then good good for you. Then go to a school like this. But if you're like me and you need a city or you're from a city and you just know it's just listen to yourself more than anybody else. I chose the school off of listening to everybody else and it's just it isn't me. The countryside is not for me. I need a city. So that's something else learned. But at the end of the day, I think you know, YouTube came out of this experience. I just have to keep in mind all the positive things that have happened this year and at times when it just feels like so much negative energy has been going around, it's hard to find the positive ones. But you know, this is this is a positive thing. Me talking to you guys and the interaction that has been going on. Without the outlet of YouTube and Tumblr and my internet friends this year, I really don't know if I could have made it. It was very challenging, but I'm so lucky to have been connected online to all of these different people. I just want to do a shout out to Maxine, my internet friend from California who I love so much and although I've never met you, I feel like we are best friends. So a shout out to her because she has helped a lot. But yeah, I guess for my freshman year, this is kind of just all I wanted to say is that it sucked. But here's the good things. If you want to see more college related videos, make sure to give this a thumbs up and to let me know in the comments below. Like I said, please leave a comment with certain questions or things that you want me to talk about and I'll try to hit them directly because this year, I mean, it was like nine months full of shit that had happened, so I need to figure out how to um, collect it in an organized manner. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you very soon. Bye! Let's just call these two girls Jack. Oh. Oops, shit. Is it gonna bother you that my friend's poster is falling? Yeah, you're welcome. I'm, I'm not gonna move it. Sorry! Thumbs up to let me know that you enjoyed or hated it. I don't really know. I'm kind of concerned because the boy that I'm gonna talk about knows I have a YouTube channel, probably watches some videos. If you see this video, I am sorry. They shine, you and Jupiter conspire.